If God knew that Satan would rebel, then why did he create Satan? Why did God create Satan? Um, I'm answering this question uh, which was asked by a, a subscriber, uh, a friend uh, called Cynthia Tate. And uh, I decided to answer this question in the, the, the way I know, you know, the, the best way that I know, guided by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a two-part question. Uh, and the first part is, uh, we should ask ourselves, is did God know that Satan would rebel? You see, that's, that's the first thing we should ask ourselves. Did he know that Satan would rebel? And uh, we know from scripture that God is omniscient, which literally means that um, God is all-knowing. He has perfect knowledge. He knows everything. So there's nothing which is hidden from him, past, present, and future. So uh, if we believe this, let's just uh, check what the Bible says, Job 37:16. Does thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him, which is perfect in knowledge? So this one is explaining that God is perfect in knowledge. And we can also confirm in Psalms, um, Psalms uh, 139 too, to see and confirm that God knows everything. And if he knew everything, then it means there is a reason behind Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. You see, David is saying, God, you know even my thoughts which are far off. Even what I will think next year. You already know it. Okay? You already know this, God. And uh, even much more. Let me show you uh, maybe some more verses. Huh? Um this is just to attest and to show you that there is nothing which is hidden from God. He understands and he knows everything from the past, the present, and, and, and so forth. I don't know if I've uh, uh, written well. Mm, Psalms uh, 147. Uh, 147 and uh, verse 5. Okay. 147 verse 5. He says, Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. What does the word infinite mean? Forever. You know, it's everywhere. All knowing. He knows the future, the present, the, the past, and everything. So, he definitely knew that Satan would rebel at some point. So now, of course, you can check many other verses. I, do, I don't have time to check all that. Eh? You can go and check uh, Proverbs 5.21, Isaiah 46.9-10. to 10. And uh, 1 John 3, 9, 19 to 20. You can see that God is all-knowing. Perfect. Now, leaving no doubt that God's knowledge is infinite and that he knows everything that uh, has happened in the past, which is happening now and which will happen in future, then when you look at some of the superlatives in these verses, perfect in knowledge, his understanding has no limit, okay? He has no limit. So he's a, he's a God who knows everything, okay? Um, uh, he knows everything. It is clear that God's knowledge is not only merely greater than our own, but it is inf uh, infinitely greater. He knows all things in totality. So if God's knowledge is not... Uh, uh, limited, you know. Let, let, let me just tell you something. If uh, think about it, if God's knowledge is uh, not perfect, then there is a deficiency in God's nature. Okay, any deficiency in God's nature means that He cannot be God. For God's very essence requires the perfection of all of His attributes. Therefore, the answer to the first question is yes. God knew that Satan would rebel. So we come to this second question here. So moving on to the second part, okay? Why did God create Satan then, knowing ahead of time that he was going to rebel? Hmm. Now this question is a, a little bit tricky because uh, we are asking why, okay? We are asking why. A why question uh, to which the Bible does not, does not uh, basically provide uh, any comprehensive answers. But uh, despite that, we should be able to come to a limited understanding uh, on the same. 
some at least some understanding okay we have already seen that uh, god is omniscient he is all knowing okay he knows everything so if god knew that satan would rebel if he knew satan would rebel and uh, uh and fall from heaven yet he created him anyway it must mean that the fall of satan was part of god's sovereign plan from the beginning, he created him. He was uh, perfect and everything. So it means uh, there was a plan, a plan of God. Okay, he had a plan. No other answer makes uh, some sense given what you have seen uh, thus far. Okay. Now, first, we should understand that uh, knowing Satan would rebel is not the same as uh, as making Satan rebel, okay? God did not make Satan rebel. The angel Lucifer had a free will, and uh, he made his own choices, okay? Lucifer had a free will. You see, he was created perfect. He had everything. He, he knew, okay? But he had a free will, okay? A free will. Free will means what? You can do A or B. The choice is yours. Okay, so God did not create Lucifer as the devil. He created him good. Let's see something here in Genesis. Genesis 1 verses 31. Let's see what the Bible says here. It says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So everything which was created by God was good. God did not create some things and say, oh no, I'm creating this and uh, it has, uh, you know, some defaults. No, he created everything good. So in trying to understand why God created Satan, knowing he would rebel, we would also consider the following facts. One fact that you have to consider is that Lucifer had a good and perfect purpose, okay? He had a good and perfect purpose before his fall. You see, Lucifer's rebellion does not change God's original intent from something good to something bad. He was created, you know, clean and with no problem. He was uh, fine, 100%. That's one thing we have to understand. Then number two, we have to understand that God's sovereignty extends to Satan. Even in his fallen condition, God is able to use Satan's evil actions. Okay? Satan's evil, evil actions, God is, used to, is able to use them eh? to ultimately bring about God's holy plan. So this falling of Satan and uh, his evil plans, God used them for good. You see what the Bible tells us here. In uh, 1 Timothy 1 verses 20, the Bible tells us something here that we need to understand. Of whom is Himesinus, he okay? Of whom is Himesinus uh, and Alexandra, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. You see, God can use, <laughs> can use even Satan for his glory. These two people, they are sent to Satan, you see, that they may learn not to blaspheme. You see, God is using Satan for his own glory, for the glory of God. You remember even God used uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar to be able to prophesy things which would come in the end. Seeing that statue of a uh, head of gold, uh, you know, and all that, you know the story from Daniel. God can use anything for his own glory. And also we can see in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 5, uh, 5 verse 5. Look at this. To deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Now this is, uh, Paul was talking about a church in Corinth, whereby people were, you know, they, they were sinning even much more than the Gentiles, the unsaved people. And uh, even someone was even sleeping with his father's wife. So they, they were believers, but they are doing so evil things. But now God was using Satan for the glory of God. I, I, I don't know if you're getting the point. So this person who, is a, who was a sinner and is a believer, Paul was saying, this person will be delivered unto Satan 
for his body to be destroyed, but his spirit will be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Because, of course, he cannot lose salvation. And this one even explains to you very well that you can lose salvation. But uh, you will die. Your flesh will be destroyed by Satan. If you keep on sinning, let's say you become immoral and you start uh, sleeping around and doing evil things, you will get sick and uh, your flesh will die. But, of course, if you are a believer, you will go to heaven. Okay? If you go and take a gun and start uh, shooting people because now you are saved by grace, <laughs> Satan will use that. You will kill people and you will be killed. Your flesh also will be destroyed. But your spirit will be saved. You see, God can use even what is wrong, what seems to be wrong, for his own glory. And I think uh, one of the things that God really wanted uh, to show us is that to, to show, you know, we could not have understood how God is merciful, how God is great, how God is this and that, if there could not have been a condition, a situation. You can never know a strength of a man unless there's a tragedy. You can know how much this person loves you unless there's a situation where love has to be shown. Are, are, you, are you seeing the point? So now, another point... Number three is that uh, God's plan of salvation. You see here it's been uh, separation. Satan has, uh, you know, uh, brought in the separation, uh, has deceived man and uh, man has fallen and now there's separation. But now God, <laughs> God is so gracious. There's always a plan. He always has a plan ahead of time. Now God's plan of salvation was ordained from eternity past. It was ordained from eternity past. Back then God already ordained a plan. See, see what the Bible says in Revelation uh, 13 verses 8. The plan of salvation was already there. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. You see, the Bible is saying the Lamb slain from the foundation. No, in the foundation of the world was even Adam and Eve there? No. When God was saying the foundation of the world was, uh, 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 was even the Garden of Eden there? No. But why was the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world? God had already created a plan, even earlier in advance, because he knew man would fall. And that's why God uses everything for his glory. So he had already created the, the payment plan that Jesus would come one day and he will die for mankind. Are you seeing this? So salvation requires something to be saved from. You have, you have to understand this. So if God has created a salvation plan, then there, there, there has to be something that you are, you are saved from. And so God allowed Satan's rebellion and the spread of sin so that through that he would send Jesus, God the Father would send his son Jesus so that he can save the world from sin. And that's why it's really, really important to understand this. And we could not have known... We could not have known how God is merciful and how God is good if there was no sin and these kind of things. But he did not create Satan so that he can sin. He created him perfect. Remember, he created Satan perfect. 100%. There was nothing problem. But he knew that one day, one time, that would happen. Okay? I don't know if you're understanding. Now, number four, the suffering that Satan brought into the world actually became the means by which Jesus in his humanity was made the complete and perfect savior of mankind. This suffering, people doing evil things to others, the famine, pestilences and issues and what and uh, you know people hating each other and all, all those kind of things. They came, okay, these sufferings became the means by which Jesus, in his humanity, okay, in, in his human nature, he was made complete and perfect savior of mankind. Why? Because he passed through the same problems that man also passed through. Remember Jesus being tempted by Satan? Change this stone into bread, throw yourself, you know, uh, uh, do this and that. All, all those temptations, it's, it's exactly the way man face the same tribals. So Jesus was in a perfect uh, uh, sense able to redeem man because he understands their nature, the nature of man. So 
In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God for for whom and though whom everything exists should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Let me let me show you even the verse. Let me show you. Hebrews 2 verses 10. See what the Bible says. See what the Bible says. For it became him from, for whom all things and by whom all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. So uh, the captain of our salvation, who was he? Jesus. He became uh, 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 our captain through what? He was in human nature. Okay. He was in human nature. He stayed with us. He felt the same way we felt. He saw everything. And through that, he became perfect for us. Yes, he was perfect because he was God. But also, he showed us an example that you can live and be a man, a human being, and be perfect. So he defeated the devil in his own game. Are you seeing that point? So there's a reason why God wanted to show all these things. So that even when we are created, just think about it. If we are just created and they were there in the Garden of Eden, there has never been any issue. We just be some robots and we don't, God is telling us, love me. And we are like, mm, why should we love you anyway? And everything is just okay. But when you see what he has done for you, are you going to despise that? You see that you're supposed to die, but then he saved you. He laid his life. He was at the cross. Are you going to play the same game that uh, you, you play? You will be like, this person did everything for me. If, if uh, all this could not have happened, then we could not have known the love of God. And number five, number five, from the very beginning, God's plan in Christ included the destruction of Satan's work. Okay, the destruction of Satan's work. I don't know if I had a, a slide for that. Huh? The destructions of Satan's work. Um, no, I didn't make an, a slide for that. But uh, you have to understand that Jesus destroyed. Let me just show you. Yeah, I think they have a slide here. Let me use this one. Now, we have to understand that from the very beginning of God's plan in, in Christ included the destructions of Satan's work. So Satan, his work was brought down. It was brought down. Because Jesus had already planned that from the beginning. Let me show you in 1 John. 1 John uh, 3 verses 8. See what the Bible says here. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see, the reason that Satan from the beginning, he was a sinner. God already knew that one day, one time, he would deceive mankind. And he came and he said, okay, okay, I know it will be there. So from the foundations of the world, God already created a plan of redemption. He created a plan of redemption. That's something that you have to understand. And uh, of course, as I finalize, think about this. Ultimately, we cannot know for sure why God created Satan. Yes, we can say we have known with all those other slides that I've shown you, some part of it. But we can ultimately can say, yes, this is it. This is the reason why. Why God created Satan. It is uh, tempting to assume that uh, things would be better uh, if Satan had not been created or to declare that God should have done uh, differently. But uh, such assumptions and declarations are unwise. In fact, to claim we know better than God how, to, uh, how he should run the universe is to fall into the devil's own sin of promoting himself above the Most High. It's like trying to say, oh, oh, I'll be like God. I know everything. Think, think about this. Think about what Satan was saying in the book of Isaiah 14, verse 13. Remember, remember, if we start saying we know everything, sorry, Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah um, 14, verse 13, it tells us the, the same, 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 same thing which Satan did. Trying to know everything about God. 
trying to want to be like God. See, the Bible says here in Isaiah 14, 13, For thou hast said in thine heart, now God is telling devil here, Satan, I will ascend unto heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud, I will be like the most high. Yet you shall be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. You see, Satan wanted to be like the most high. He wanted to be up there. He wanted to know everything, but it is only God who knows everything. Some things we may not really understand. God will tell us when we get to heaven uh, why he did this, why did you create this, why did my loved one have to die at this time, why did I have to face all these tra troubles, why did I have to get cancer, why God did I uh, break my teeth, why, why was I born blind. There are some things that uh, God will have to answer, will answer to us so perfectly in that day when you get to heaven. So, the whole story of explaining this is to show you that God has an ultimate good plan. Good plan of everything. He has a reason why he created Lucifer, Satan. And uh, of course, we have read, we have understood where we can. Okay? God is all-knowing. We have understood that he has a perfect knowledge of everything. He understands everything. Okay? And uh, we also somehow understand why probably... God would have created Satan and allow him also to sin. You see, God is all loving and kind and all that. Think about it if, if God did not even allow things. If, if, if you did something wrong today and immediately God threw you to hell, think about it. But he always gives you chances. Think about even before you got saved. How many times have you, fa have you done wrong things? You have gone and, uh, you know, stolen and... Uh, did all wrong things, being corrupt, uh, uh, lying to people, and God did not send you packing to hell. Why? Because he wanted to show one of his attributes that he's a loving God. And he's also loving so much that he allowed <laughs> Satan just to, you know, some time to relax and uh, do whatever he has to do. Remember when Jesus had just uh, crossed the, the sea uh, with his disciples, and uh, they met this, um, he's called who? They met this uh, a guy who was possessed with demons. Who are, or who they, those demons, they were saying they are called a legion. And those demons, they spoke and they said one thing. No, 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 no. Why do you want to send us to hell before our time? You see, God is all loving and he knows that... Uh, <laughs> There's a time for everything. There's a time which will come. Every sinner will have to be judged. Right now, <laughs> do your thing. But know that one day, one time, you'll be judged. And I believe that's why God allowed Satan to sin and to do whatever he has to do. So that God can show his attribute of mercy, kindness, you know, all those kind of things. And also patience. So you have to understand that Satan had a free will. He had a free will to do what is good and to do what is evil. And he chose what is evil. And if you follow him, then you'll be like him. And you will not say that uh, he was created, uh, you know, differently. No, he was all perfect. Actually, he was one of the, I think he was one of the most perfect creatures ever created by God. Okay, so you have to understand that. And But uh, because of that rebellion, then sin entered. And then there was separation. And now when we also followed Satan, who had also fallen, then we also fell into the trap of sin. That's why it's very important on where we pay our allegiance. If we pay our allegiance on God, he will be uh, perfect for us. We will stay with him. But if we pay allegiance to Satan, then we'll be separated and we'll be here. And God is on the other hand. And we don't know how to get to him because this is where all the goodies are. And we are here separated. We are in the darkness. And that's why Jesus had to come in the place so that he can create a bridge. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the way to eternal life, the way to no condemnation, the way of passing from death to life. If you want to stay there, you can stay. It's all up to you. But for those who want to get saved and uh, walk in the way of God, here's the gospel. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about believing how that Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures. Jesus became our propitiation. He became our way. The only way to heaven is through believing in what Jesus did for you. He lived a perfect life. He died with no sin and he rose again. And 
If you believe that he did all this for you, he suffered for you, he was hung on the cross for you, he laid his life for you, you believe that and you confess it to God and you tell him, Jesus, this is what you did for me, now I have understood. Thank you for dying for my sins, for uh, being buried and, be, uh, and raising again, all for me. Thank you, Lord. I receive that atonement. I receive that at all. Make me a new creature. Now, when you do that and you tell, you believe and you tell God what you believe, then that's what we call salvation. Then you have been able to be saved. So that's that's really important to understand. So hope this has been a blessing and hope um, I Cynthia Tate now been able to answer your question. If you are there and you have any other question that you may need uh, I answer a biblical question, please just type it on the comment and I'll definitely make a video and uh, explain on that topic because let's let's edify each other. Let's be able to understand what the Bible says. Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, don't forget to subscribe and also to hit the notification button so that you don't miss uh, a new video, don't miss any video and also share to your friends. Let them be able to know uh, the gospel and be saved. God bless you and have a uh, blessed time.